what's the ultimate computer for music production? What should you look for and why? In this video, I'll explain just that, and I'm also going to be building a brand new computer from scratch. People often ask me these questions, and it's time for me to upgrade to a faster computer anyway, so I figured I'd take you through the process and show you what parts I ended up going for and why. But before we start the actual build, let me tell you a little bit about what's needed from a computer in order to make it a good choice for music production because there's many things to take into consideration here. Audio processing is one of the most CPU-intensive tasks people do on computers today because it relies on real-time processing. Applications such as video editing rely heavily on parallel processing, which basically means that the work can be spread over the various cores in your CPU. Video editing and games also get a lot of help from your video card. Music production, on the other hand, relies solely on the CPU, and unlike many other applications, it doesn't utilize parallel processing very well. Instead, it relies heavily on serial processing instead. So with that in mind, let me try to explain why music production can't utilize parallel processing very well. Here we have a synth generating a sound, and the CPU needs to process this sound before any additional effects can be added in the mixer. After the sound has been processed, the compression needs to be processed. When that's done, it can process the EQ, then the delay, and then the reverb, and so on. This all needs to happen in the correct sequence, one after the other, and it also needs to be done by the same core that started the work in the first place. It can't get help from the other cores, even if they're not doing much. It's kind of like making a pizza. You can't make the dough and cook the pizza at the very same time. It all needs to happen in the correct sequence. Try to imagine that the CPU cores are chefs. Adding more chefs in this case won't help at all. Because music production relies so heavily on serial processing, single core performance therefore becomes very important. In fact, it's more important than the sheer number of cores because if just one of those cores gets overloaded, then everything grinds to a halt. The other cores have to wait for the one core to finish up. They can't step in and help it out. This is why FL Studio will often show a much higher CPU load than Windows Task Manager will. When choosing a computer for music production, the first thing you should look at is single core performance. You typically want to get the CPU with the best single core performance you can get within your budget, but you still want a reasonable number of cores. Don't get anything with less than four cores. For example, it's better to have a six core CPU with fast single core performance than having an eight core CPU with slow single core performance. As you can see from this list, the trend is that Intel is currently ahead of AMD here. AMD CPUs typically have more cores, which is great for applications that can utilize parallel processing, but because music production relies so heavily on serial processing, single core performance is most important. Right now, the Intel i9 CPUs are currently the best choice. It features a reasonable number of cores, fast clock speeds, and very good single core performance. So now that you know a little bit about what to look for in a CPU, let's look at laptops versus stationary computers. There's pros and cons to both. If you're constantly on the move, then a laptop is the obvious choice. Well, the cons with the laptop though, is that they typically offer far less performance for the price versus a stationary computer. They also tend to heat up easily due to insufficient cooling and you'll end up with a lot of fan noise. A stationary computer is typically much faster, cheaper, and quieter. Well, the downside, of course, is that it's stationary. It's not very mobile. When it comes to operating systems, it doesn't really matter if you use Windows or Mac. Use whatever you like and whatever supported by your DAW of choice. That said, I should point out that you will usually get more performance for your money if you go the PC option. You typically want to go for no less than 8 gigabytes of RAM. I recommend 16 gigabytes to be on the safe side. Again, go for the CPU with the fastest single core performance and use an SSD if you have huge libraries like Nexus, Omnisphere, and so on, since SSDs are much faster than traditional spinning disk drives. When it comes to video cards, it doesn't really matter what you use because you can't utilize the GPU anyway. 
but get one that'll support more than one monitor. Using two or more monitors can really speed up your workflow. Last but not least, go for a quiet PC. There's nothing more annoying than fan noise when you're trying to produce. Now, let's move to the actual build. I basically live in my studio, so I'm going to go for a stationary computer. Here's the foundation of my new rig. I went for this clean and stylish looking case from Fractal Design, the Define R6. The main reason I chose this case, because it's very quiet. It has sound isolation material covering all the surfaces on the inside, making it extremely quiet. And as a music producer, this is very important. It's also very good looking with its clean black brushed steel design. You can get it with tempered glass on the side door if you want, but I went for the solid black door instead in order to get the sound insulation there as well. Another obvious reason is the functionality of this case. Everything is carefully thought through. All the cabling is routed on the back of the case, and there's even space for two SSD drives behind the motherboard. The Fractal Design R6 comes with two fans in the front and one at the rear. This should be more than enough, but I decided to install another fan at the bottom as well, just to be sure. Installing hard drives is extremely easy. They can be mounted on these vibration insulated plates. I have quite a few hard drives in here, and there's still plenty of room as you can see. If you need a case with a lot of storage or just like to have plenty of room, then you can't go wrong with the Fractal Design R6. There's a filter in the front and bottom which can easily be taken out and cleaned. This prevents dust from building up inside the case. All in all, this is a great case that should accommodate all your needs. It has plenty of options for water cooling and anything you can think of. Now, if you're looking to build a new stationary computer, then you should definitely consider the R6. Let's move on. Here's the components I chose for this build. If you want to buy any of these parts for yourself, you can find the Amazon link to all the parts in the description below. I make some very large projects and I also do a lot of video editing. So I went for the 9900K CPU. The 9700K and the 8700K are also very capable and cheaper than the i9 CPUs. If you're going for AMD, then the Ryzen 1700X and 1800X will also work very well. Again, go for the CPU with the highest single core performance that you can afford. I installed 32 gigabytes of RAM. For most people though, 16 will be more than enough. Another important thing to consider is cooling. Besides performance, you also want the computer to be quiet. Noise is key here, or rather the lack of it. That's why I went for the NHD15 CPU cooler from Noctra. These coolers are massive, but they cool extremely well, and they're also extremely quiet. I overclock all of my computers, and even under heavy load, I can't even hear this cooler. The dual 140 millimeter fans are pushing a lot of air, even at low RPM, which ensures a good cool CPU at all times. I used to have water cooling, but I got annoyed hearing the actual pump itself. A friend of mine recommended the Noctra coolers, so I decided to try one in my previous rig. I was so impressed by the cooling ability and the silence that I haven't looked back since. That's why I went for air cooling and not water cooling here. This time I went all the way and installed their largest cooler, the D15. But they also have some smaller ones that also cool really well if you think this one is overkill. This setup will be quieter than most water cooling options and perform basically the same. Also, there's no chance of any water leaks here. If you check out some of the reviews online, you'll see the difference between the D15 and some of the best water cooling solutions is minuscule, and you get a quieter cooler at a lower price ideal for music production. This is how it all looks once everything is installed. Now, let's have a look at how this performs compared to my old setup, which was an i7-5820K. Here's the benchmark comparison. The 5820K is still no slug. It's an older CPU by now, but it was originally designed to be a real workhorse. It also supports quad-channel memory, while the i9 only supports dual-channel. Benchmark tests can only tell you so much though, so let's see how they compare in a real life scenario.
As you can see, the newer i9 delivers a reasonable performance gain. To sum it up, if you're looking for a new computer today, which is going to be dedicated to music production, then you certainly can't go wrong with the 9900K. Again, go for a CPU with the fastest single core performance you can afford. Don't go below four cores though. The amount of cores still play a role, of course. As of right now, the 99K with its eight cores and fast single core performance is an ideal candidate if you want max performance. That said, many of you won't need that kind of computing power. Some of the older i7 CPUs might be more than enough, and even the i5, depending on what kind of music you make and how large your projects are. Get at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and preferably an SSD to minimize lag when loading libraries and such. The same rule applies if you prefer a laptop. If you're going for a laptop, I recommend getting one that's a bit faster than what you actually need to make sure you don't max it out, which will cause excessive heat and noise. Again, if you'd like to have a look at the parts I used to build this PC, then you can find the links to all the various components in the description below. Well, that's it for the PC build. I hope you found this video helpful. I'd like to thank our Patreons for their ongoing support, and as always, if there's any specific tutorial you'd like us to make, or if you have a question, just let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out the links below if you need feedback on your music, mixing, mastering, and so on. Thanks for watching.